HTML and CSS are scripting languages that are used on every single page that is on the internet. Thanks to Tim Berners in 1989, the internet became what we know today as the World Wide Web. And so most people think of the web as the internet. This is the first web page that was ever developed. You can see the URL at the top is from CERN.ch. And CH, interestingly enough, is the URL for Switzerland. Before there were web browsers, this is what the World Wide Web looked like. You would press tab to go through each of the hyperlinks and press enter if you wanted to visit one of them. CERN is a particle accelerator laboratory in Switzerland and France whose job is to develop scientific experiments that explore great mysteries of the universe. CERN is a huge facility that covers two different countries. As you can see, their key achievements include things like finding out what antimatter is and the Higgs boson particle. And in their list, they include their achievements as the birth of the web. HTML has gone through five different revisions. So you can see way back in 1989, through the 90s it was changing, and then there's a large gap between 97 and 2014 where very little changed. If you were to look for a job with just HTML as an experience, you would probably be disappointed because most people would assume that you know HTML if you are a software developer. So it's a fundamental building block but it is not the only thing that you need if you need a job. HTML is a text file that is interpreted by web browsers. And so you can see that the paragraph tag of hello world here would be interpreted by each web browser on each operating system in a consistent manner. Web browsers vary by name brand, but they all try to do the same thing. They try to display web pages in a reliable and pretty format. Software developers need to keep track of new features of CSS or HTML, and so a good website is caniuse.com, which will tell you which web browser can render each part of the web page correctly. So the very first web browser was Netscape Mosaic, which was distributed on floppy disks as early as 1994. It turned the internet into a graphical user experience, and everything exploded in use-wise since then. Soon after, there was a battle between the browsers between Netscape and Internet Explorer from Microsoft. Netscape was going to be one of the most dominant companies like Google or Facebook today, but Microsoft killed them with their integration of Internet Explorer into the operating system, which led to a lawsuit and a near breakup of the company of Microsoft. If you want to create your own web page, you can open up a notepad or Visual Studio Code text editor and type these actual letters. So a web page has opening and closing tags and contents between them. If you render it into a browser by opening it with Chrome, for example, you'll see the web page displays in nice clear letters. The key to making a web page look good is adding a CSS file. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And so you can see here a link on line 5 to another folder and another page called Style CSS. This is what a CSS page looks like. You can see that we are targeting each element on the HTML code from the body to the H1 to the paragraph. In between those brackets, we add different CSS commands to change things like the font, the color, or the alignment. And so when you're done, you can apply a page to a CSS file and you get a result that looks like this here. So HTML and CSS work closely together to put the contents on the page as well as the style of the page. CSS is more challenging to learn than HTML. You can learn HTML in five minutes. However, CSS could be a full course. CSS has so many commands that most people rely on cheat sheets to look up all of the different commands that are available. Here's an example of where you can see styling change. So this website called CSS Zend Garden takes a standard page and formats it in different ways using only CSS changes. So the contents of this page and this page are identical, but the styling is different. And so even though each of these examples is dramatically different, they are all the exact same contents with different CSS styles. 
In HTML, you're going to see a few tags that are very common, like a heading. So from headings one through six, you can see that the descending level of importance is reflected in their size. If you want to add a hyperlink, you add an href tag here on line 10, and then you can go back as this example shows. Most websites have data entry forms, and so this is what an HTML form looks like. We're accepting text values for name, email, and phone number, and when this page is rendered on the web browser, you see this result. If you'd like to learn how to build websites using HTML, CSS, and other languages, then visit studycoding.org, where you can see tutorials that will make you a professional software developer. So I look forward to seeing you at studycoding.org.